And here we are, we're on our way to Tucum Carry. 278 104 5440. 209 but 66 is much more fun. Get the load I carry to Tucum Carry. Here I come. Now, hey, hey, hand. You okay, in the backdrop of our motel, you'll find Tucum Carry Mountain. You can barely see it. There's a white T that gets painted every year by the local seniors from high school. Tucumcari Mountain is where Tucumcari the city got its name from, and they took that name from the mountain in 1901. Years ago, during the 20s and 30s of Route 66, there were still teepees on top of the mountain that you could see as you drove down the road. What's nice about the Motel Safari is that it's an old-fashioned vintage motel. It's been updated. Hello and welcome to Tucum Carry. My name's Richard Talley. My wife Gail and I own the Motel Safari. Uh, the Motel Safari was built in 1959 by a man named Chester Door out of Chicago. It was run for over 30 years by a man named Ron Fry from Chicago, who still lives here in town today. Uh, we bought the hotel in 2007 and reopened it after remodeling in 2008. And uh, the architectural style is called Googie or Doo-Wop. If you look around the property, you'll notice the uh, protruding uh, bricks and the uh, oozing mortar. That's part of the old Googie architecture. And then cylinders with light holes and all kinds of quirky little things like that. Okay, we're in Tucum Carry and uh, we're at the Mother Road Memory Lane and this is owned by Danny and Linda Ellis. I've had this place about 30 years and 11 years ago I built this building. I just needed a place to work and keep my, keep my equipment and it has evolved from keeping my equipment into getting into old cars and Route 66. As time has gone by, I've managed to acquire different kinds of cars, and some of the cars I've got are really nice cars, and some are just old clunkers. The car that you're filming now is a 39 Grand Page. The old man that I got it from passed away, and I wound up getting five of these cars from him. This other one is a 1934 Studebaker, and it's a complete car. We're sitting at the table here with Mary Lynn Monkus and Tucum Carey, and Mary is going to teach us Never call me Mary. Never call Not me. if you want to live. <laughs> you call me Lynn. Lynn. If you want to live. Or Mrs. Monkus? Not that either. You can call me Miss or Professor. Okay. Okay. We'll go. Uh, what was the get three things? Here? <laughs> no, I forgot what to call it. Well, how about life on Route 66? All right. My father was elected sheriff of Quay County, which is the the county, Tucumcari is the county seat of Quake County. We moved into Tucumcari from our ranch at Ima, New Mexico in 1939. At that time we were living in the courthouse. The sheriff's wife cooked for the prisoners and so forth and so we were living there and we were interested in Route 66. My father was a person who was very compassionate. This was toward the end of the Depression, but it was still during the time of the people going west. He would drive, drive out on Route 66, which was not necessarily paved then, to find these people who were stranded and might be freezing to death. And he would bring them to our house and to the jail if they wanted to spend the night in the jail if we didn't have any more room in our house and most of them did and they'd have a hot meal so i was introduced to life on route 66 at a very early age 
And then, as most of us who grew up here just took Route 66 for granted. We, well, in, in my teenage years, for instance, we spent our time, as we called it then, dragging the highway. Today they cruise the highway, but we dragged the highway. One of us would find a car somewhere. We didn't have the cars as kids through the day, but someone would be able to get the parents' car for the night. We would pool our money and get 50 cents worth of gas, and we would spend the evening cruising 66, honking at each other, stopping along the way to get a coat. And this was our major entertainment. We'd also go down and, and cruise, drive Main Street, drag Main Street. The sun goes down to come carry the night. Where we gonna be when the moon comes round to come carry the night? Where we gonna go to let the good times roll? Where we gonna find a way to soothe our soul? Where we gonna be when we reach our goal? Yourself a smiling face to can carry the night where they're living life at an easy pace to can carry the night where we gonna find a place to lay our heads dream a little dream and drink a little red tomorrow if we want to we can stay in bed to come carry the night land of the common cheryl the common sheriffs were, uh, you know, the real bad guys. They, uh -huh. would, they, they would, were around here and they would head north to the wagon trains and uh, rob and pillage the wagon trains and we'd come back here and divvy up the, the goodies. <laughs> from the kids in the job, cause at the end of the day, hey, it's gonna take a day. Where would Doug and Sharon, uh, Doug, you're an artist, and you're an artist as well. I am. And so these two artists, they uh, do all these beautiful pieces of art you see around us, and they're also mural makers. And we're in their shop, the Pearl Art Gallery, uh, which has, they display all their stuff. Uh, I did a mural uh, for a uh, motel safari down the road down here, a good friend of ours, and um, he wanted that uh, flexible clipper uh, bus, which is an old early style bus, and the wall that he wanted to put it on is was a trick. It, it, um, every uh, other brick was protruding out about six inches, and um, I really didn't want to paint them very much because just they're just hard to do like that. And the wall was covered half half of it was covered with them things, so um, I I didn't paint them at first. And we started looking at it from the road and it's just, they stuck out like a sore thumb. So I had to go back and paint them again. We're with James Crocker right now and Tukum Carey, and James Crocker is the town photographer. I went to work here in 1961 at this studio and I've kind of collected these old historic photographs that people bring in. Both of these were high schools and they've both burned down since that time and this was the first racetrack in the state of New Mexico right here. This is Herman Munkus, he was an early pharmacist in Tukum Carey and uh, uh, he would collect historic items, and matter of fact, uh, when he went out of business, retired finally, well, most of his items went to what we now have the Tootencare Historical Museum.